I saw a trend about someone touching water in every single Mario game, and if there's one thing that I'm good at, it would probably be hopping on trends. So today we're going to be touching water in every single Pokemon game, and with 23 different variants that we'll be playing, there's a lot to get through. Pokemon Red is first on our list, and seeing as there is about four and a half models in this game in total, I don't think we'll be seeing a random puddle on the ground anytime soon. So our best bet is to get HM Surf as fast as possible. I choose Bulbasaur to help through the first two gyms, and catch a Nidoran to use as our carry. I get Nidoran up to about level 10 and get Vine Whip on Bulbasaur before sprinting to Brock and taking him out. We fight the trainers on Route 3 and in Mount Moon, allowing both Nidoran and Bulbasaur to evolve. We find a Moonstone in Mount Moon as well, and we use it right away to get ourselves a Nidoking. We make it through the routes, defeat Misty, and dart for Vermilion. After boarding the SSN and skipping every trainer except our rival, we obtain HM1 for Cut and head into Surge's Gym. Nido King, being a ground type, completely removes the need for thinking, and after about 5 minutes of failing digging through trash, we make it to the leader and defeat him without another thought. Now all I have to do is make it to Fuchsia City, right? Of course, just after clearing all of the Rocket Hideout and all of the Pokemon Tower. But we've done it, and now we're here in Fuchsia. I make my way through the Safari Zone, obtain the HM for Surf, and have one more task of defeating Koga to earn the ability to use Surf. Now that we've done that, we head for the nearest water and... Uh, okay. We clock in our red run at 2 hours, 13 minutes, and 56 seconds. Next is Pokemon Yellow, which is the same game as Red, only different. We don't have the option of using Bulbasaur this time, so I opt to catching both a Nidoran and a Mankey in hopes that the fighting type will give me the edge over Brock. What I didn't realize is that Nidoran actually learns the fighting move Double Kick in Yellow, and so grinding up the Mankey wasn't necessarily worth it. But it's fine. Nidoran and Mankey take out Brock, and at this point I make Nidoran my full sweeper, holding off on using the Moonstone until after defeating Misty to avoid the super effective damage. The run's pretty much identical to Red up until we meet Koga. Apparently, Muck, Coughing, and Weezing weren't toxic enough for him, because this time around he chooses... Oh. Three Venonats and a Venomoth, who are all higher level than Red's Koga's Pokemon, and they know psychic moves. I lose once, level up on the trainers, I skipped and rematch him, getting the victory and surf. We choose the Warden's Pond this time, hydrating up in 2 hours, 32 minutes, and 20 seconds. Gen 2 is next, and if I'm being honest, I didn't remember the pathing all too well. I played Crystal first, which will become pretty apparent in the gameplay. Similarly to Gen 1, Surf is our fastest way to touch water, so I choose Totodile to solo through this playthrough. Another four gyms are required, so I head to Violet City to take on my first. I choose to fight through Sprout Tower to get a few more levels, and after a short amount of time, we get our first badge. It's at this point where I forget to talk to the aide in the Pokemon Center and run a full lap by the ruins before taking the egg and giving me access to our next city. On the way, Totodile evolves into Croconaw. I wish he could use Water Gun on my sprite. I don't really think there was a good way to say that. I don't know... Who put that in the script? What the hell? We make it to Azalea Town, defeat Team Rocket, and head into Gym 2, where we barely pull out a victory. We head through Ilex Forest, which for some reason is the only thing I remember how to do, obtain Cut, and arrive in Goldenrod City to fight Whitney. I lose to her Miltank, as most people might, but after a couple X attacks and some luck on the metronomes, we achieve the greatest feat in Pokemon history, making someone cry. My biggest blunder follows this up, as I need to get to this building right here to remove the Sudowoodo. But I forgot, and walked around the National Park bird watching for 20 minutes until stopping to look up what I did wrong. But we push onwards and make it to Ecruteak City, playing with some dogs and fighting the Kimono Girls to obtain Surf. All that's left is to fight Morty, and with a Feraligator that knows Bite, it's not too long before we can finally surf on some bright blue water in 1 hour, 56 minutes, and 17 seconds. Gold was next, and after doing all the same strats and having some better movement and game knowledge, we get Surf and defeat the four gyms in 1 hour, 42 minutes, and 52 seconds. Moving on to our next console, we open up Ruby on the Game Boy Advance. Now this and Emerald might stir up a little controversy, but when you're playing 23 different games in a week, you take what you can. After hopping out of the van and setting our clock, we head north to find Professor Birch being chased by level 2 Poochiana. We don't judge the weak around here, so I'll help him out. I choose Mudkip, save the Professor, and head further north with my new Pokemon to kick his daughter's ass. With my fit. We get the Pokedex and the running shoes before Dash before dash, before dashing over to the first trainer. 
I get through the route and make my way to Petalburg Gym where I meet my dad for the first time. It's been so long, father. Where have you been? Oh, yeah, sure, I guess. We help Wally sprint over to the beach and we dip the literal tip of our pinky toe into the water. Yeah, I'm counting that. Look at the pixels. Look at the pixels. Are you kidding me? 11.46 is our time. Emerald is very nearly identical, but I accidentally caught a skippable trainer's eye and forgot to pause the timer, so this one clocked in at about 17.34. Oopsie! Heading back to Kanto for the third of four games here, we open up Fire Red. Classic. I have a bit of a hunch that I know where I can get our hands on some H2O, so I hustle to the lab to grab my Bulbasaur. We speed through Viridian Forest as fast as you can when you still don't have the running shoes, and make our way out to Pewter City to take out Brock like the garbage. Just like his Onyx's attack stat. Moving on to Route 3, I fight the trainers and catch a Nidoran, just in case my theory is wrong. But after heading into Mount Moon, my theory is instantly proven correct, as there's water flowing out of the rock. Let's go! <coughs> <coughs> Yippee! 45 minutes, 42 seconds. Pokemon Coliseum is a sick game. Make a third, Nintendo. We load in terrorism, theft, murder. Grand Theft Auto- oh, never mind, that's mine. All we have to do is fight Wily, head over to Fennec City, and take out the goons before we can touch the water fountains at 10.09. Look at the pixels! Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness is a little longer, starting in a new area and not remembering how to progress the story it makes things a little harder. There's too many rooms for my little noggin to comprehend. But after making it to Dr. Kuminko's lab that's storming with no rain- Fucking asshole. Professor Crane gets abducted. Uh-oh, bad news. We gotta build the purifier chamber ourselves. We go to Gadeon Port and cry over the fact that we can't go in any of this water, stomp a thug wearing a crop top, and grab the part after being lost for a couple minutes. Once we make it to Agate Village, we can run up the slopes, head over to the waterfalls, and touch the streams at 30 minutes, 11 seconds. Pokemon Pearl on the DS is one that I definitely thought would be quicker. We get our starter, head over to Sand Gem Town, go down to the beach, and touch the water. Oh. The pixel doesn't touch. Well, now what do I do? Cry? I, what? Would that count as water? I didn't plan any farther ahead than this, so welcome to my Pokemon Pearl Let's Play. Not really, but we have to pass through Jubilife, get the Poketch, go to Orberg, defeat the gym, go back to Jubilife, fight some clowns, go to Floroma, walk to the right, get locked out of the Windworks, obtain the key, unlock the Windworks, fight Mars, maneuver through Eternal Forest, beat the second gym, get a caught. <gasps> Fight Jupiter, obtain the bike, enter Mount Coronet, exit Mount Coronet, emerge into fog, which doesn't count, god damn it. Get to Heart Home City, leave Heart Home City, arrive in Salacion Town, leave Salacion Town, and finally, we make it to round 215, giving us some sweet, sweet rain after 2 hours and 12 seconds. Platinum gives me the same sand gem heartbreak, forcing me to beat everything up until the second gym, but there's a difference here. The entire gym is, um, uh, what's different, I guess. Instead of the gym being a giant forest where you play hide and seek, there's a flower clock with sprinklers. But after realizing this knowledge way later than I probably should have, I run up to the sprinklers, quenching my thirst in 1 hour, 13 minutes, and 13 seconds. Soul Silver, our third installment of Gen 2, is everything I ever wanted every other game to be in this video. Getting my starter, running to Cherry Grove, and splashing on that nice little beach in only 7 minutes and 10 seconds. Gen 5 and onward, I haven't played nearly as much, so I didn't have much of a game plan for these. After destroying my bedroom and running away to chase my dreams, I find some water on the first route. Can't touch it. It's like at this point, they're putting water in these early spots to tempt my willpower, you little game freaks. I get through all the introductions and tutorials in Accumula Town and head up the route until I reach Striaton City, maybe? I don't know. Where I fight the first gym. Well, shit. How do I process this? Am I touching the water or am I touching the bottle? Does this count? Um, uh, I say no to it, and after losing to the Pan Sage a few times, I realize that I forgot about the Monkey Lady, and once I get my Pan Seer, we're in the clear. Realistically, I could have beaten this gym like 20 minutes ago, but I don't really care too much. I'd rather take my time and enjoy the scenery. After solving the Muna problem and finally being able to leave, I follow Sharon to this cave where Team Plasma has captured a literal child. This is Pokemon. But look, by the prophets! I dash over, letting the cave water drip on my shoe in 55 minutes and 31 seconds. Now, Black 2 is the same, right? Get to the cave, let the water drop on my head is what I thought. But no, that'd be silly. I even changed my month to January on my clock. 
to give me spring in hopes that I'd get some rain. Uh, no. So now I have to play through the game again, and I have no clue where I'm going. I go to Flossessie Town, get lost in said town, make my way to Flossessie Ranch, get lost in said ranch, then get lost in Flossessie Town again before finally going back and taking on the first gym. I run over to Verbank City and get my second badge, and yet another port. <laughs> I take my talents as an actor to the big stage in Pokestar Studios. I don't care about any of this. Once the movie is done, I finally get to leave, but I find myself a nice little splash fountain in the studio after one hour, eight minutes, and 59 seconds. Moving on to our next console, we start with X on the 3DS. After looking around the neighboring houses for puddles or ponds, I make my way north to Aquacord Town and meet up with my new friends, who give me my new starter, Froakie. I try to touch the water in the fountain, but I can't quite reach it, so I will have to look elsewhere. I fight Shauna, and after going home one more time, my journey is ready to begin. I cross the bridge, holding back tears for what's below, and make my way to Route 2 for the catching tutorial. Once I have relative freedom, I make it through Santa Loon Forest and arrive in Santa Loon City. The first gym has bug types, so I'm not really sure when I'm going to see any water Water soon. I fight some trainers to prepare myself for the gym, and once I go inside, I walk around the gym trying to get to the leader. What I don't realize is that I'm actually blind, and uh, I ran over about 20 different drops of water before realizing that I had already touched it. I touched the first drop around 27 minutes and 49 seconds for a pretty decent time. The final Gen 3 game is Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, and this one is a lot more forgiving than the originals. We get our starter, fight our rival, catch Ralts with Wally, and head over to the beach to feel the nice waves on our feet at 16 minutes and 28 seconds. Sun and Moon, the game's based in Hawaii, surely this will be fast enough, right? Surprisingly, the closest water we have is on the beach just south of our house, but due to the tutorials and restrictions, we actually can't go there until we've saved Lily and Cosmog, selected our starter, and fought with How twice. But we were able to reach our beach and our water at 31 minutes, 24 seconds. Ultra Moon is like Moon, but Ultra. But I noticed that aside from an actual battle with the Spearows by Cosmog and a little longer dialogue with members of Aether, we settle with a very similar time of 32 minutes and 12 seconds. Now on to our final console. Let's Go Pikachu is the fourth and final Gen 1 game we get to play, and we do it on the Switch. It starts very similarly, but obviously this is a different type of game, as we catch Pikachu on Route 1 and watch it roll away before reclaiming it back at the lab. We head up to Viridian, deliver Oak's parcel, fail to jump in a little pond, and head up to Viridian Forest where we can find ourselves an Oddish for Brock. We also get a catch combo of Pidgeys to spawn in a Bulbasaur. Once we have some grass types, we head in, take out Brock, and head for Mount Moon. I have a good feeling that similar to Fire Red, there's going to be water in there somewhere. We clear out the trainers and hustle in to find Jesse and James blocking our way forward. But look! I knew it! We finish the dialogue and walk under the drop of water to finish our run at 37 minutes and 37 seconds. Pokemon Sword and Shield are next, and while I don't have either, I do have a friend who does. We get through the cutscenes and I notice a pond in Leon's yard. We try to dip our feet in, but it doesn't work. So now we have to progress the story. We follow Hop into town, meet Leon, get our starter, and then proceed to go into the most suspect forest I've ever seen in my life. I'm shocked I didn't lose my kidneys in there. More tutorials, more new people, and we make it to Magnolia's house where we get this close to touching the riverside. We fight Hop again, race to the train station, and walk out into the wild area where it is raining. It's not raining. Um, okay, we do a little time traveling, you know what I mean? Until we find a day that is anything but clear and the raindrops smack me in the head at 40 minutes and 12 seconds. Three more games on our list, and none of them have quite irked me like this one. But opinions aside, this run was pretty quick, picking our starter and making it to San Gem Town, where we can actually run along the beach in the water. Kind of. Legends Arceus is without a doubt the fastest game on this list, as all we have to do is select our character, talk to God, pass out on a beach, and touch some nice cool water. And finally, we have the newest release in Pokemon Scarlet. You don't really feel just how long the opening part of this game is until you realize that you can't even move until you're three and a half minutes in. But we get up, say hi to our mom, say hi to our dad, and walk down the street with some Pokemon before we reach our neighbor Nimona's house. Luckily, her family is rich and she has a little pond out front that we are able to walk in before we ever pick our starter at 10 minutes and 24 seconds. And there you have it. No water is safe while I'm around, you hear? I will come for your water and I will take it. I will not give it back, for it is my duty to touch the water. Until I keel over and die. Here's the list from the fastest to the slowest. Hopefully you enjoyed the video.
Thank you so much for watching. I make Pokemon and other Nintendo videos weekly, so if you made it this far and haven't already, maybe hit subscribe. It would make me feel happy and cheerful on the inside, and also filled with glee. I don't know what else to say, I'm gonna be honest.